Did you know your heart will beat approximately 3 billion times in its lifetime? Therefore, it's important we keep it really strong. So let's do it. Hi everyone and welcome to Exercise for Health. I'm Richard and today we'll be doing a home workout mainly directed towards people that have coronary heart disease. For example, if you suffered a myocardial infarction, known as a heart attack, or have had some sort of surgical intervention such as a heart stent fitted or had a bypass graft, or even if you have a risk factor for it such as high blood pressure or diabetes. However, due to the nature of the way we conduct the exercise in this video, you may also find it useful if you just want a cardio-based workout that helps to keep your heart healthy. If you're new to this channel, we offer tips, advice and exercises each week to help you manage your health condition. So please tap the subscribe button below and the bell icon to be notified of when we upload a new video. So before you start the workout today, please ensure that it's safe for you to do so based on your current health. If you do have coronary heart disease, even if it's well managed, then you should only follow this program if one, it has been at least six months since your cardiac event or intervention and you've been given the go ahead to exercise by your GP or health professional. Or two, you've recently completed a cardiac rehabilitation program provided by a hospital-based cardiac team and they've graduated you to a community-based rehab program. Additionally, if you have any of the ailments listed in the description below, then you should definitely not take part in this program today. So if you need to check them first, please pause the video to read through those before continuing. Remember, this program is not individualized, so you must be able to work to the level that you're comfortable with. And if in the unlikely event that you do experience any unexpected chest pain, then stop immediately and call for the emergency services. To take part, you'll also need the following. So initially you're gonna need a floor space to exercise in that's safe for you to move around and free from trip hazards, a wall space to perform a press up on, appropriate clothing and footwear, two weights, which can be a tin of beans, or in my case, I've got a couple of filled water bottles. And if you've got your own set of light dumbbells, then use those. Have a drink handy for when we have a short break or for whenever you need it. If you suffer from angina, then you should have your GTN spray with you. And finally, you'll also need to be able to self-monitor your workout by means of checking your heart rate before you start and while you're exercising. With any cardiac rehab uh, program, it's really important that you check how hard you're working by means of a pulse check and using what we call the rate of perceived exertion scale, which I'll introduce you to before we start. Now, if you know how to do this, because you've watched this video before, and you wanna skip straight to the start of the workout, then go to the time that's now on the screen below. So, if you're still with me, I'll then explain how to take your pulse. Ideally, you need to be seated for a few minutes to relax and get a more accurate rest and heart rate. If you have your own heart, heart rate monitor, like a smartwatch or a pulse oximeter, like I've got here, then use that to check your heart rate. If not, then you need to find your own pulse by using the first two fingertips and gently press on one of the two pulse sites. So the most common one to use is the radio artery, which is on the underside of the wrist, on the thumb side, and you'll be able to find your pulse here by lightly pressing your two fingers there. The second is the carotid artery located between your jawline and in towards your windpipe at the top of your neck. So this one's harder to find, but generally it's a stronger pulse than the wrist one. Once you've found it, you then need to count the number of times you feel the pulse within a 15 second period, and then multiply that number by four to get your heart rate in beats per minute. So while we're at rest, we'll take a 15 second pulse check now. I'll say go and then stop to mark your 15 second period, and then all you need to do is count the pulses in that time frame. Also, it's worth noting that if you've got heart arrhythmia such as atrial fibrillation, you may find your pulses to be irregular and not beating consistently. So, if you find your pulse, and then get yourself ready, go. Stop. Right, so you should have a number of pulses that you counted in that 15 second period. So multiply that number by four, and that's your current rest and heart rate in beats per minute. It's worth making a note of this as you can monitor then the, the actual progress over time. And if your heart rate at rest is above 100 beats per minute or higher, then you should definitely not be exercising today. For most people, it will be around 60 to 80 beats per minute. However, if you're on a heart medication such as a beta blocker like atenolol or bisoprolol, then your rest and heart rate might be even lower. So don't worry if you get a reading in the 50s. 
Now halfway through the workout today, I'm going to ask you to take your pulse again so you can see how hard you're working. We'll use the same method of taking it for 15 seconds and then multiplying it by four. Everyone will have different heart rates while exercising as it's dependent on many variables. And if you've done a cardiac rehab program, then you may already have a target heart rate zone, which may be, for example, 85 to 100 or 95 to 110. However, I'm also going to get you to use the rate of perceived exertion scale to monitor how hard you're working. So I'll ask you how puffed out you feel on a scale between zero and 10, where zero is like being sat down doing nothing, and 10 is like maximum exertion where you have to stop. Our aim is to try and get to around a four, five, or six in that workout, so you feel moderately puffed and you know you're working, but you should be able to sustain it for the workout. In the session, we'll also do a lengthy gradual warm up to build your heart rate up slowly, and then conduct an interval based workout where we mix two minutes of a cardio exercise, followed by one minute, which should be about 10 to 15 reps of a strength exercise as an active recovery. If you don't feel you can manage a full two minutes of the cardio exercise, then for the remainder of the time, just march on the spot for a bit to allow your heart rate to recover. And if you get a little bit too puffed, you can just slow it down to a walk. So make sure you don't stop moving. Gradual change in intensities are really crucial to exercising the heart in the right way. And we don't want to put any undue stress on it by placing too much load too quickly. So I'll tell you and explain the exercises as we do them. And then at the end of the workout, we'll do a relaxation, stretches and cool down. So gradually bring your heart rate back down to normal. So now that I've explained all that, hopefully it makes sense. If you're ready, we're going to get started with the warm up. Right then. Make sure you've got your space. We're going to start off with a nice gentle warm up. So in your space, we just start with a nice light walk on the spot. So not working too hard initially. So as with the normal cardiac rehab program, you probably, if you've done it before, you probably used to just walk in around the space for about 10 minutes and then doing a more formal work with the instructor. So this is going to be slightly different where it's still going to be a good sort of 10 to 15 minutes as part of the warm up. But I'll just introduce you to different exercises as we go through. We're going to do two rounds. So the first round is going to be at a slightly lower intensity and then this, when we come back to do it again the second time round it will increase the intensity slightly to build that heart rate up a little bit more. So the aim is to gradually build your heart rate up slowly. So first one we're going to do is we're going to start off with a little bit of a footwork routine. So I want you to do some heel digs out to the front. So lift the toes and the feet back towards you as you tap the heels down in front, alternating between left and right. Good, now we're going to change it now to a toe tap. So we're going to point the foot forwards, tapping the toes down in front, again alternating between left and right, just at a nice steady pace. Good, now we're going to do that toe tap, but this time we're going to take it out to the side and back to the middle. So let's go and tap to the side, back to the center, again alternating between the left foot and the right foot. Good, and then the last one of this footwork routine is we're gonna do the toe tap to the back. So most of the weight's gonna stay on the front foot, and all I'm doing is taking the foot back behind me to tap the toes, and then bringing it back to the front again. Good, now we're gonna go back to a walk. So again, nice steady walk. Think about your posture while you're walking. As we need to start to fill the body with oxygen, we need to be in a good upright posture to allow the lungs to begin to expand. So make sure you've got the shoulders down and back, while you're standing up tall, while we're walking with the feet. Okay, the next one we're going to do is we're going to keep the feet walking, but I'm going to get you to move your upper body now. So I want you to do a shoulder shrug. So from there we're going to lift the shoulders up towards your ears. Squeeze the shoulder blades back together and then let the shoulders drop back down. So I'll turn to the side so you can see. Lift the shoulders up, squeeze the shoulder blades back and then let the shoulders drop back down. Good, so it's a nice way of really getting those muscles working on the top of the back and then opening up the chest as you squeeze the shoulder blades back. Good, okay, let's stop with the shoulder rolls and we'll just go back into a walk again. Okay, the next one we're gonna do is gonna be some side bends. Now for this one we are gonna have our feet still. So what I want you to do is take your feet down to a standstill, but take the feet out a little bit wider. Just keep the hands on the side of the legs for now. We're just gonna lean the body gently from left to right. So we're moving that top half of the body as you slide your hand down the side of the leg.
Okay, the mile warming up, we don't want to keep the feet still for too long. So come back up to the middle, bring the feet back in, and we'll go back to a walk again. Okay, hopefully you should start, if you feel a little bit warmer now, you should feel like your breathing rate's increasing a little bit, and you'll physically feel warmer too. Okay, the next one we're going to do is take our feet down to stand still again like we did on the last one. So again, out a little bit wider. Just relax the arms down and then from there we're going to twist the shoulders. So I'm going to turn my body to face one way, twist it back through the middle and twist, turn and face the other way. So the hips are staying facing forwards, they're not moving. I'm just twisting that top half of the body from left to right. Again, we won't be doing this for too long, keeping the feet still. Do one more, come back to the centre, good, bring the feet back in and then we'll go back to a walk again. Brilliant. Right, got another one which is going to be a knee raise. Now for this one, we're going to, not going to lift the knees too high because again it's still part of this first round part of the warm up. So what I want you to do is put your hands out in front of you as a guide but keep them literally no higher than hip height so you can have them a little bit lower if you need to. And then from there I want to lift the knee up to tap the hand. Okay, I'll just show you from the side. So I'm lifting the knee up to tap the hand in front while you're maintaining a uh, nice good upright posture. Good, and because you're doing this at a steady pace, it's quite good for your balance as well. Brilliant, well done. Let's go back to a walk again. Okay, so that's the first round done. We're gonna go back through that cycle of exercises again, but we're just gonna raise the intensity up a little bit. So that's gonna build your heart rate up that little bit more to get you to a pre-exercise state ready. So, so you're trying to get to that point where you're ready to start doing the main part of the workout. Okay, so the first one we did was the footwork. So, what we're going to do this time is we're going to incorporate the upper body at the same time. So I want you to do the heel dig with the feet, but this time we're going to do a bicep curl action on the arms at the same time. Good, so we're keeping the elbows tucked in, bringing the fists up to the shoulders. Show you from the side so you can see. So every time you do a heel dig, both arms are coming up to the front. Keep those elbows back. Good, okay, the next one we're gonna do is the toe tap out to the side. As we do that, we're gonna raise both arms up to the side. So keep the pace nice and steady. Don't let the arms go any higher than your shoulders. So that's as high as they're gonna go. Good, next one we're gonna do the toe tap to the back and we're gonna bring both arms up to the front. So as I do the tap to the back with one foot, both arms are raising up to the front. So as we're incorporating the arms with the legs, it just makes it a little bit more intense because more muscles are working. So there's more demand on oxygen, so the heart rate's got to go up. Breathing rate should be going up as well. So you should find you're breathing a little bit faster now. Good, okay, let's go back into walk, but we're gonna make it a bit more of a march now to increase that intensity. So rather than down here like we did at the beginning, we're going to lift the knees up a bit more and get a little bit more of a swing of the arms as well. Good. Okay, now on the first round we did some shoulder rolls. This time we're going to do elbow rolls. So we're going to keep the feet marching and then with the hands I want you to lift them up in front of you until you get to the chest so the elbows go out to the side. Squeeze the elbows back and then let the arms drop back down. So we're lifting the elbows up, squeeze them back and drop them back down while you keep the feet marching. Good. Brilliant, okay, let's go back into a normal march again. So still getting a bit more of a swing of the arms, slightly higher knee lift. Okay, a little bit of respite then from the marching. So bring the feet down to stance and that a bit wider. 
We're going to do the side bends, but this time we're going to take the hands out to the side. So we're reaching out to the side as you lean the body to one side. So we're just forcing the arm out straight as you reach each way. Good. Yeah, we won't do this for too long, so we want to keep the feet moving. So come back up to the middle, feet back in. Let's go back into that march again. So you should be feeling a lot warmer by now. You should certainly feel your breathing rate is a lot more increased than what it was on the first round. Okay, so let's go into those twisting torso twists that we did earlier. So feet down to stance a little bit wider, but this time we're gonna bring our arms in front of us as we rotate. So twist one way, back through the center, twist the other way. So just keep the hands in front of the chest and elbows the same height as you rotate the spine from left to right. Good, and then bring it back to the center, feet back in. Let's go back into our march again. Okay, so on the first round we did a knee raise where we kept the hands quite low. This one we're going to bring the hands up a little bit higher and also, if you want to, this is optional, you can introduce a bit of a twist to it. So I have my hands a bit higher than my hips this time, as my guide. Now you can either bring the knee up to the hand on the same side or you can choose to bring it across the body to tap the hand on the opposite side. So I'll let you choose. Good. Couple more. Brilliant. Bring that back down to a march again. Okay, so that's completed the warm up. So you should feel now that your heart rate's up, ready to do the main part of the workout. So that's what we're gonna go on to next. Right then, so now we're gonna start with the actual main part of the workout, which is gonna be done as two circuits. In each circuit, we're gonna have a combination of cardio-based exercises, which will last for two minutes, and then in between that, we're gonna do some active recovery exercises, which will last for one minute, and you should be aiming about 10 to 15 reps on those exercises, because that's gonna incorporate your arms. So make sure you've got your weights ready, Keep your feet moving. As I'm gonna set this up, this is gonna be your visual reference so you can actually see the time that we've got left as we do each exercise. So, let's get this one started. Cardio. Okay, so first one we're gonna do then is we're gonna do a side step and then just do a little bit of a leg curl. So basically we're bringing the heel up towards your bottom as you move from side to side. Now for each of these cardio exercises, you can choose how hard you wanna make it. So if you, if you find you're getting too puffed, you can make it a smaller movement, less of an arm swing, and you're not raising the actual foot up too far behind you. If you're finding it easy, then you can make the movement bigger, make the arm movement bigger, and even up the tempo, try and get the heel of that foot up towards your bottom. Okay, so this one's the one, because it's a cardio one. In a cardiac rehab program, this would be your red station or leg station. So this is the one that's gonna get the heart rate working a little bit more. And we're gonna do this for the full two minutes. Now if at any point within the two minutes, and I'll, this will be the same for all your cardio exercises, if you find it's getting a little bit too much, then you can just go back to walk for a bit just to allow your heart rate to recover. And then if you feel that you've got enough energy to go back into it again, go back in. But what you should be aiming to do is try and adapt the exercise to make sure it's about right for you. So work to your level. So on that rate of perceived exertion scale, we should be aiming for around a four, five, or six. Good, so we can see how much time we've got left. So you should be feeling breathless doing this, but it should be manageable. Good, hope you're all feeling all right. We've only got a few more seconds left on this one. So at the end of this, we're gonna then do go into your first active recovery exercise. That's gonna be a bicep curl, so that's where you're gonna need your hand weights, or whether you've got your Three, tins of beans. Two, one. Okay, so 
grab your hand weights or your bottles of water, whatever you've got. We're going to do a bicep curl. So with this one, I just want you to keep the feet marching, keep your elbows tucked in, and then slowly lift the weights up towards your shoulders, and then back down to your arms are straight. So keep the elbows tucked in. There should be a nice slow controlled movement on these active recovery stations. So you keep control of the weight as you go up and down. But I want to make sure that we keep the feet moving all the way through the workout, feet not going to stop. We'll even keep them moving when you have your rest break. And we do a pulse check as well halfway through. Good. So if you're counting your reps, you should be aiming to get to about 10 to 15 within the minute. I think I'm close to about 10 now. We've got 10 seconds left. So if you find you're doing more than 15 reps, you're probably going a little bit too fast. If you're not making it 15 to yeah. 10, Love. go a bit quicker. Love. Right, pop the weights down. We're now going into back our next cardio one, which is going to be squat with flip kick. So from here, feet about shoulder width wide. So I'm just going to do a little half squat, come up, flip kick out in front. That's not going to be very high. I'm just going to flick out my foot in front. So I'm alternating between the legs as I flick the foot out in front after I've done the squat. So squat first, flick kick, squat, flick kick with the other leg. You can choose how low you go down on your squat, because obviously the lower you go, the more muscles you're going to work, and that's going to increase your heart rate even more. So you dictate how low you go. Just find the level that feels right for you. If this is getting too much, when you come up, you can do two flick kicks at the top, then do one squat, kick, Kick. so that just lowers the intensity slightly. If you can keep up with doing one flick kick between each squat, that's gonna make it a little bit harder. So as you're squatting down, make sure you're keeping your head and your chest up. So then you can just bend at the hip and the knees. So that'll just help support the lower part of the back as you're going down. Hands can go wherever you want, as long as they're not above your head. So make sure they're staying below shoulder height. Some people put their hands on their hips. If you find that more comfortable, you can do it that way. You can have your hands crossed over your chest, hands out in front, or just relax the hands down to the side. It doesn't really matter too much. Good, so when you do these flip kicks, imagine like you've got a flip flop on, you just flick in the flip flop off your foot as you flick it out in front. So it shouldn't be high. Your foot shouldn't be kicking any higher than your knee. It's just to keep the feet moving after you've done the squat. Last few seconds on this one then. Then we're going to go to your wall. Two, one. Active recovery. Good. So for our active next one, active recovery, we're going to go to the wall and do a wall press up. So make sure you're short distance away from the wall. Hands a bit wider and a bit lower than your shoulders. Get the hands flat, feet shoulder width wide. And then from there, just let the body go towards the wall and then push yourself away. So we're bending at the elbow and the shoulder as you go in and out, but the body stays in a straight line. So I'm not doing this, I'm not letting my hips drop and I'm not keeping them back behind me as I go in. So it should be my chest going towards my hands as I go towards the wall, not my head towards my hands. So chest towards hands. Again, slow and steady, because we should be aiming to do about 10 of these. Keep breathing with it. And you'll feel this on the back of the arms working a bit and into the shoulders and into the chest. Good. Three, two, one. Good. Cardio. Okay, well done. So back into our cardio. So this next one's going to be a knee raise with a punch. So if you start off with your feet about a shoulder width wide, and what I want you to do is I want you to lift one knee up. As you do that, you're just going to do a gentle punch out in front, drop that foot down, and then when you lift the other knee, the hand on that side is going to do a punch. So we're just going from one side to the other side. So you don't have to look like Muhammad Ali when you're doing your punch. Just keep it nice and light. So you're just reaching out in front. So simulating a punch sort of movement as you raise the knee up. So again, we've got this for two minutes. Like I said before, if you need to, you can slow it down back to a walk again. If your heart rate feels like it's going up too high, you're getting too puffed, just go back to walk for a bit to keep everything moving. But if you can keep it going for the two minutes, Fantastic. So you can vary the intensity of this by doing it easier, which is a lower knee and a lower punch. So I'm punching down towards the floor. If you want to make it harder, 
knee up higher and you can also increase the tempo as well if you want to make it harder. So make sure you keep breathing with it though. Oxygen needs to go in, carbon dioxide needs to go out. So just as important to breathe out as you do breathing in. Good. So we've got less than 30 seconds left. Hope you're all feeling good. I'm sweating. Right, last few seconds. So our next active recovery exercise is going to be back using your weights again. Three, two, one. After Good, two, okay. Three. So grab your hand weights again, wherever it is that you've got. So this is similar to the bicep curl in the fact that we're going to keep the feet marching. So keep your feet moving, even if it's just a little bit. And then we're going to do a side raise with these weights. So I'm going to take the arms out to the side just to shoulder height and then bring them back down to the side of the hips. So a nice, slow, steady movement. And you'll feel this working down around the shoulders. Okay, as you're doing this, make sure you keep the shoulder blades pinned back as your arms are going out to the side, so you're not rounding your shoulders off. So keep the shoulder blades back as you lift the weights up to shoulder height. Good, so you should feel your heart rate's recovering a bit now from that last one. Yeah, nice, slow and steady with the arms. It's quite easy to get into habit speeding up too much after doing Three, the cardio. Two, one. Good. Cardio. Okay, so we're back into our cardio exercise. So for this one, we're going to do an arm race to the front with a step back. So both arms are coming up to the front, and as you do that, we're just creating this step back with one foot. So most of your weight should stay over your front foot as you step back with the other leg. So it's not quite a toe tap with the back foot because you are actually allowing the back heel just to start to drop towards the floor a little bit. If you find that's getting too much, you can just lower your arms so they're not as active, which will make it a little bit easier. Or you can just do single arm and single leg this way. Okay, that'll make it slightly easier so you're not working both arms. But if you can do both, that's the main part of the exercise. And that could be something you could try and get to. If you can't do this at the moment, over the next few weeks, if you do this video again, you can start try and work towards it. Good, so because there's another cardio one for the two minutes, you should be feeling that heart rate going back up. So that means that you're breathing faster than what you were a second ago. How are you feeling? You're still with me. It's good work. Keep the oxygen going in. This is when you realize two minutes feels like quite a long time. Good, so we've got 20 seconds left on this one. And then we've got one more active recovery after this. And then we've got the last cardio one before we do a pulse check. So for the next one, you're going to need your hand weights again, or your bottles of water or tins of beans. Three, two, one. Active recovery. Very good. So grab your weights again. So again, similar to what we've done on the bicep on the side raises, we want to keep these feet moving. So let's keep those feet marching, even if it's just a nice gentle movement. And then with the weights, we're going to start them off down in front of you. What I want you to do from there is lift them up. So the elbows are going out to the side and then your weights are come up level with your chest and then control it slowly back down to your arms are straight. So you're keeping the weights that you've got in your hands really close to the body as you bring them up to the chest. So keep them close, like you slide them up and down the front of your body. Elbows should be up higher than the fists all the way through the movement. So even here, elbows are higher. Okay, it depends on your shoulder mobility. If you find that's too much, you can just take it down a little bit lower but make sure you keep these feet moving. Three, two, 
Love. Good, well cardio. done. Right, our last cardio one then for this first circuit is going to be a half star. So from here I'm doing a toe tap and an arm raise to the side and then the other one. So we're just repeating from one side to the other side. Now if you want to make this one easier, smaller movement, so you're not raising your arm up quite so high and the toe taps only a little bit out to the side. This is the normal movement. If you want to make it harder, you can do both arms together with the single toe tap out to the side. Okay, so your heart rate now should be at the point, because we're about to take our pulse after this one, it should be at the point where you're feeling pretty puffed, but you know that you can sustain this level for another circuit through, because after you've done a pulse check, we're going to do another circuit. And in between these two circuits, it's important that we don't slow down too much because we want to try and keep the heart rate going throughout the entire circuit. That's good. So you should be feeling that heart rate up. Keep breathing with it, keep the oxygen going in. Excellent. Almost there. So remember after this one, we've got to go straight into a pulse check. So it's really important as soon as this finishes, we want to try and get as accurate as we can, is to take the pulse as quick as we can. So I'm literally going to give you about five seconds to find your pulse after this one. And then I'll say go and stop. So you can then count the number of beats that you feel within that 15 second period. Last 10 seconds then, and then get ready to find your pulse. Three, two, one. Well done. Congratulations. Right. Keep the feet moving. The two fingers on the underside of the pulse or on the side of the neck, wherever you're choosing. So find it as quick as you can. Get ready. Go. Stop. Okay, so you should have a number, times that by four, okay, and that will give you what your heart rate is at the moment from doing that first circuit through. So if you want to go and record that down quickly, but keep yourself moving while you're doing that. And also at this point, if you want to go and grab yourself a drink, now's the time to grab a quick drink if you need it, okay? And then once we've done that, we're then going to go back in and do that circuit again a second time round. So we don't want the heart rate to drop too quickly now. So we want to keep that heart rate going. So keep marching in between. We'll just give you a little bit of recovery time. And then I'll set up the timer so we can go again for the second circuit. Okay, so hopefully you've had the chance now to record your heart rate down. Also remember to write down what your rate of perceived exertion is as we've been going through the circuit. So how puffed out did you feel on a number between zero and 10? Hopefully it should be around a four, five or six. So somewhere around there, that should be the sort of level that you should be working to. Now if you found at the end of that circuit it was lower than a four, then you know then the second circuit round we can start to up it a little bit more. If you found that it was like six going into a seven and it was a little bit too much, then you know this second circuit round just to lower the intensity slightly, okay? So it needs to be right for you. Okay, so get ready. We're gonna start off with those side step leg curls. I'll get you started on the timer. Cardio. Right, off we go. So we're back into that second circuit. So we're doing this side step with the leg curl. So I'll just show you from the side. So make sure we're lifting that heel up towards your bottom as you move from side to side. You can increase the intensity by a bigger movement of the arms and the legs or going faster, but just make sure you've got a level that feels right for you. So you know the nine exercises now, so I won't have to talk you through each one so much. Good. So you want to maintain that heart rate all the way through this second circuit. When I say maintain it, it won't stay exactly the same. It will go up and down a little bit. So on these exercises, when this is red, that's a cardio exercise. So that means your heart rate will start to go up as a response. 
And then when it goes to the blue, the next one, the active recovery, where we've been using some of the weights and the wall press up, that should give you a little bit of recovery time and the heart rate will come down. It's also worth noting that the heart rate doesn't respond immediately. So if any change of what you do, normally takes about 30 seconds to a minute for the heart rate to respond. So if you think, oh, I'll change the intensity and then it feels, still it feels easy, just wait a little bit doing that same intensity before you change it again. Good. Good, same as before as we did on the first circuit, if it gets a little bit too much, take it down to a walk, but hopefully by now, you should realize what your level is, what you can work at to sustain it for the full two minutes. So at the end of this one, we're gonna go into our bicep curls. So that's where we need our hand weights again. So either your tins of beans, your dumbbells, your water bottles like me. Three, two, one. Good. Active recovery. So grab your hand weights, keep the feet marching. So keep the feet moving. And then from there, we're gonna do bicep curl action. So elbows in nice and tight, shoulders down and back. Bending at the elbows, bringing the fists up to the shoulders. Good. Good, remember nice, slow and steady on these exercises. This is your active recovery, so that means we're still moving. We're working the arms a little bit, but it should make your heart rate lower slightly to give your heart that little bit of recovery time we go back into another cardio one again. So it should be aiming for about 10 to 15 repetitions of these, for 10 to 15 lifts of your weight. After this one, we're going into the squat with the flip kicks. Three, two, one. Okay, good. So pop those weights down, and then get back into your space. So we're doing that squat with the flip kicks. Remember, hands can go wherever you want. So little squat, kick out in front. Little squat, kick with the other foot. Remember, we're not kicking high, it's just a little flick. Like I said in that first circuit, it's like you've got flip flop on, and you're just flicking it off. Hands can go wherever you want, so just find a comfortable position for those. You choose your tempo as well, so if you're finding it's easy, you can increase the speed if you want to. Make sure you're still getting the oxygen in though. Come the dog side out. Good. Good. If you're starting to feel a little bit like you need a drink, obviously feel free to take a drink whenever you want to. But just make sure you keep the feet moving while you're taking that quick drinks break and then come straight back into it again. So we don't want to be static at any point throughout the circuit. Doing good on time. Good, make sure you're bending the knee and the hip, head and chest up. As you start to tire, if your muscles are getting a bit tired, you start to cheat a little bit and you'll bend over. We don't want that, so make sure we're still keeping the head and the chest up as you squat down. Brilliant. Last few seconds on this one. Then we're gonna go back to our wall for the wall press up. Three, two, one. Brilliant. So, back to your wall press up. Remember, hands a bit wider and a bit lower than your shoulders. Feet shoulder width wide too. And then from there we're gonna go in, make sure you keep the body straight, and then come back out. Now if you want to on this round, just to keep the feet moving a bit, we can put in a little heel raise. So when your arms are out straight, lift the heels up and down, then go back in again. As soon as you've got your arms straight and your body's pretty much upright, we can add in that little heel raise just to keep the feet moving a little bit. They will move a little bit as you go in and out on the press up, but it would just add an extra component to work the muscles in the lower part of the leg. So as soon as you've got your arms straight, lift the heels up and down, and then go back in for your press up again. Excellent. Last few seconds on this one. Three, 
three, two, one. Cardio. Excellent, right, back into our cardio. So we've got the knee raise with the punch. So remember, whichever knee raise we're lifting up, that side is doing the punch. Knee with the left, punch with the left, knee with the right, punch with the right. So working a little bit on balance and coordination on this one. Same as before, you choose your tempo. Remember this is your workout, it's your routine, your program. So you must ensure that you stick to a level that feels right for you. So on that RPE scale, you should be around a four, five or six still. If it's gone up too far and you feel you're getting really puffed to seven or an eight, then just bring the intensity down a little bit, make it easier so it allows your heart rate and your breathing rate to come back down. If you're still really thinking this is easy, it's a two or a three, then up the tempo a little bit, make it harder so it just allows your heart rate to gradually come back up again. So you should be feeling moderately puffed out. Brilliant. Keep it going. We've only got four exercises left after this one. And then you've done the main part of the workout, main circuit. Good, so we've got 30 seconds left. So after this one, we're going to go back with our hand weights. Wherever it is you've got, we're going to go into the side raise. Good. Last few seconds then. Keep it going. Three, two, one. Well done. Active recovery. Good. So grab your hand weights. Okay, so we're going back into the side raises, so let's keep the feet marching and then from there we're going to raise the arms up to shoulder height and then back down to the side of the hips. So remember, not taking the weights up any higher than your shoulders. Make sure you keep the shoulder blades back and keep the feet marching. So nice slow steady movement. Remember we should be aiming for about 10 to 15 reps within this minute. Keep the shoulder blades back as well as you lift up. Brilliant. Feeling good? Good, we've only got three left to do after this one. Good, should be feeling that working in through the shoulders. Last few seconds on this one. And then we're into our step back with the arm raise. Three, two, one. Cardio. Well done, so pop the weights down. Okay, so let's go back into our step back then with our arm raise up to the front. So make sure toes go down before the heel as you step back and keep most of the weight on that front foot and then just raising the arms up to shoulder height to the front. Alternating with the feet as they go back. So same as all the other ones, you choose your tempo. Good. So remember your rate of perceived exertion should still be between four, five or six, somewhere around there. So feeling puffed, but be able to sustain it for these two minutes. Excellent. Good. Just gone halfway on this one. Keep it going. Yeah, let's see if you can sustain that tempo. If you need to go into a little walk for a bit, just a bit of recovery, then do that if you, if you need to. And then see if you can get back into the exercise again. Last 20 seconds then. And then we've just got two exercises left in this last circuit. Should be feeling puffed. 
three, two, one. And Good. then recovery. Okay, grab your hand weights again. So we're into the upright row this time. So keep the feet marching. Arms out straight to start off with, and then lift the weights up to level with the chest, elbows out to the side, and then back down. Nice, slow and steady. Make sure the elbows lead. So the elbows are higher than the fists. Make sure you keep the body upright. That real slow, steady movement so you control the weights. Don't let the weights control you. So you can feel that working around the shoulders, top of the arms and the top of the back. Remember, if you're counting your reps, we should be aiming between 10 and 15 repetitions within this minute. Keep the feet marching. Good. Three, two, one. Well done. Cardio. Hold the weights down then. Last exercise then is the half star, so let's go back into that. So whether you just want to do the single arm, or whether you want to do both arms as you do the toe tap out to the side. So shoulders not going any higher than shoulder, uh, sorry, your arms not going any higher than shoulder height. So last cardio one. So we did take our pulse after we finished the first circuit which is general protocol now for cardiac rehab programs is to do it halfway through the workout to see how hard you're working. So then you can then adjust the second circuit accordingly to work harder or slow it down a little bit if you need to. But some people like to take their pulse again at the end of the circuit before we go into the cool down. So if you want to, after we finish this last one, if you want to take your pulse again, just to see how it's doing, feel free to do that, but you might need to pause the video just momentarily to do that before, because we're going to go straight into the cool down at the end of this. Good. So keep the oxygen going in. It's all downhill after this one. seconds then keep it working all the way to the end if you can if you need to go into a little march now go into a little march on the spot that's how we'll start the cool down anyway three two one congratulations you have completed the circuit thank you very much Okay, well done, back into a walk again. Good, and then we're gonna go into our cool down now. So we just need to adjust it to allow the heart rate to gradually come down slowly. Well done. Right then, let's go start through this cool down. So keep the feet marching. And remember with the cool down, we wanna gradually reduce the intensity of your workout so we can allow the heart rate to recover slowly. So don't wanna stop straight away because otherwise the heart rate comes down too quickly and that's not particularly good, especially if you've got any heart arrhythmias or anything like that. So we just want to make sure that we gradually reduce the intensity and then at the end, when we gradually bring it down to stand still, we'll do some stretches to finish off. Okay, so what I want you to do now is I want you to do a side step. So I just want you to just do a little side to side step where you can just tap one foot to the other foot as you move from side to side. Good. And we'll go back into a walk again. So normally in a cardiac rehab program, you're probably used to walking around your space within the hall setting or studio setting for about 10 minutes before you then finish off with some stretches. So again, because we don't have that in a home environment, we've just adapted it slightly. So that's why we're doing some of this first and then we'll do some stretches in a few minutes. Okay, next one I want to do a little box step. So basically that's where we just go one step forwards, one step back. So visualize you've got a very low step on the floor just in front of you, step up onto it, step back off. Good. 
this. So these exercises should feel like they're easier than what they were in the main part of the workout. So it should find now that your heart rate's gradually recovering slowly. Brilliant, let's go back to the walk again. Okay, so we're gonna go through those couple of exercises again. So we're gonna go back to the side step. At this time, I just want you to reduce the actual movement slightly to lower the intensity a little bit. So let's go back into the side step, but this time it's not gonna be moving quite so far as we move from side to side. So that's allowing that heart rate to come back down. Good, and then we'll go back to a walk again. So let's start to slow the walk down a little bit as well. Always find after doing some exercises that you tend to find your metabolism's up, so you want to work still quite as hard and quite as fast. So we just want to discipline ourselves now to reduce it down slowly, so we're not still working at a higher tempo. Right, let's go back into those box steps, but again this time it's going to be a smaller movement, so a smaller step forwards and backwards, and at a slightly slower pace as well. gentle walk now, bring everything down. Okay, right, we're gonna do a little bit of mobility work before we go into our final stretches. So it just keeps the body moving a little bit. So with that, we're gonna gradually bring your feet down to a standstill. And I want you to have your feet about a shoulder width wide on the floor. And if you just place your hands on the hips, and then from there I just want you to gently move the hips from the left to the right. So your head's always going to stay pretty much central in between where your feet are in a vertical point. But the hips are going to be moving from side to side gently. And just go as far as you feel comfortable as you move them from left to right. Good, now what we're going to do is we're going to create circles with those hips. So we're going to circle the hips round in one direction. And then change direction and circle the hips around in the other, other way. Good, okay, right, next one we're gonna do is we're just gonna take the arms across to one side, allowing the back foot to come up on the ball of the foot and then we're going to swing the arms across to the other side. So we're just turning the hips, letting the arms swing out to the side around behind you, but you're not taking the arms up too high. So we're just leaving them no higher than shoulder height as they come up round. Allow the back foot to come and pivot up onto the toes or up onto the ball of the foot, and the hips will turn from one direction to the other direction. run through a few stretches now so we're going to do a top to toe so I'm going to start the top and then work down so the first one I want you to do is we're just going to work around the neck so from there you can put your hands on your hips if you want to for this one keep your feet about the shoulder width wide and then I want you to just gently tilt the head just to one side so it's like you're taking your ear down towards the shoulder and then you'll feel a stretch on the opposite side of the neck so slow gentle breathing while we're doing these stretches now breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth Gonna hold each stretch for about 10 to 15 seconds. Good, bring it back up and then we'll do the same the other side. So just gently let the head tilt to one side. So you're not lifting the shoulder up, keep the shoulder down, but you're trying to take the ear down towards that shoulder on that side. So you can create the stretch on the opposite side of the neck. 
good. Focus on your breathing. So nice, gentle breathing now. Finish the cool down into the stretches. Brilliant, bring that head back up to central. Right, let's stretch out the muscles across the top of the back. So for this one, I want you to place one hand on top of the other. You're then gonna roll the shoulders forwards, which will then split the shoulder blades apart, and then push your arms forwards away from you. So as you push the arms away, that will generate a stretch up around the top of the back. Again, slow, gentle breathing while you hold that stretch. Hold it for about 10 to 15 seconds. Good, and release. So the next one we're gonna do is we're gonna stretch around to the front on the top of the body, so the chest. So this time if you get the back of the hands into the lower part of your back, just on the way your tailbone if your spine is, and then from there you're gonna squeeze the elbows back and the shoulder blades back together, and as you pull them backwards, that will generate a stretch across the chest and the front of the shoulders. <coughs> Excuse me. Good, and release. Right, next one we're going to do is we're going to stretch the muscle around the side of the shoulder. So for this one, if you take one arm out in front of you, and bring it across the body, keeping it straight, and your other hand's gonna go up underneath to pull that straight arm further around. Good, and release, let's switch over. So take the other arm out in front of you, bring it across the body, and then your other hand's gonna go up underneath on the outside to gently pull that arm Cross and round. So it should create a bit of a stretch on the side of the shoulder. Good. Okay, next one we're going to do is we're going to stretch the tricep muscle, which is the muscle on the back of the arm. So I want you to bend the elbow first, so you're bringing the hand up to the shoulder as close as you can, and then start to lift the elbow up and back like you're trying to get your hand to go down your spine and you can use your other hand if you need to to assist it to push the elbow further back so you should generate a stretch here on the back of the arm. Good and release and swap over the same other side so hand to shoulder first lift the elbow up and back assist with the other one if you feel that you need to so you can create the stretch here. And still focus on the breathing. You should be feeling now like your heart rate's come completely back down, like it's almost back at its resting state. It won't be back completely down to the level it was before you did the exercise, because your metabolism will be up a bit higher, so that means your heart rate will be up a little bit more. But it should feel like it's coming back to normal again. Good, okay, and release. Right, the next one we're gonna do is we're gonna stretch the muscle on the inner thigh, we'll probably get a little bit of a stretch on the waist at the same time. So for this one, take the feet out a little bit wider and keep the legs straight, place the hands on the side of the legs, and then from there I want you to just take one hand down the side of that leg as the other one lifts up. So you'll either feel stretch on the waist on the opposite side, or you'll feel stretch on the inner thigh of this leg that you're leaning down. Good, come back up to the centre and let's do the same the other way. So just lean the body to one side, slide the hand down the side of the leg, feel that stretch here. You might feel a stretch on the waist on the opposite side as well. Good, then come back up to the centre, bring the feet back in. Right, we've got two more stretches to do. The next one we're going to stretch the muscle on the back of the leg called the hamstring and the calf muscle as well if we can at the same time. So place one foot a short distance in front of the other, keep this front leg straight at the knee and place the hands on the back leg and then I want you to think about pushing your bottom up in the air behind you as your body comes forwards and that should start to create a stretch here on the hamstring. To get the stretch on the calf at the same time we're going to come up onto the heel of that front foot so I'm pulling the toes of the foot back towards me. So now I can feel stretching the calf at the same time. So again, hold it there, just for about 10 to 15 seconds. 
Make sure you're still breathing with it. It's quite important to make sure we're still breathing. Good, and then switch over and do the same on the other side. So make sure you get that front foot just a short distance in front of the other. Knee straight on that leg that was stretching. Hands on the opposite one. Take the body forwards, pushing the bottom up in the air behind you. And then when you've got the stretch, lift the foot and the toes of that front foot back towards you. So you can stretch the calf. Good, right, last stretch then. We're gonna stretch out the muscle on the front of the thigh. So if you wanna hold on to something for support for this one, because we're gonna be going up onto one leg, so hold on to either a wall or something nearby that you can hold on to that's quite sturdy. So I want you to take hold of one foot, then either grab the ankle or you can grab the back of the trouser leg or the back of the trainer if your mobility is not so good on the knee. Try and get the heel of that foot up as close as you can to your bottom. And then this knee that you're bending needs to be in and back. Push your hips forward so you stand up straight and that should generate stress then on the front of that thigh on the quadriceps muscles. Good, and then switch around, do the same thing on the opposite side. So take hold of the foot with the ankle first, get the heel of that foot up towards your bottom, bring that knee in and back, hips forwards, stand up straight, and you should feel the stretch on the front of that thigh. Good. Good job everybody, well done, I hope you enjoyed that. Excellent job, well done. Right, make sure you keep a note of your heart rates and your RPE results so you can come back to this video again and again to monitor your progress. It may be that if your fitness improves with these exercises, your heart rate won't go up quite so high, but more importantly, you should see consistent results each week to maintain a healthy heart. With that, I'll see you on the next video very soon. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video today, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click here to subscribe to this channel or click here to watch a recent video. See you soon.